reason why we invented the offense at the University of Nevada, 2005, this was our philosophy. We wanted a way to run the football downhill and still put the quarterback in the shotgun. So that was the whole premise behind, you know, getting in this formation and starting, a, you know, the pistol offense. Well, we found out, you know, as we uh, experimented, is it always a big experiment at first, is we found that the running back got the ball deeper, helped to set his blocks, okay? It really hit the running back, it was hard on the linebacker's keys. You know, they couldn't see that running back, and a lot of times that first action of the back, you can't tell if it's run or play action because he's hidden by the quarterback. The thing I really enjoyed or thought it was a real advantage is teams cannot set their fronts based off your back offset. You know, like a lot of teams will set the three away or to the back or, or they'll dick your protections, you know, based by where you're back. Sometimes you got to set the back off to see your protection when you're in a shotgun set. That was real nice about the pistol. Also allows you to choice your runs and not have to move your back. You know, you see some shotgun teams when they choice a run, they're moving their back back and forth. You didn't have to do that in the pistol. And then we were able to use all of our formations, whether we had one, two, three tight end sets, wing sets, and it didn't limit our play selection. <laughs> Here's my favorite run out of the pistol. This is called the horn. And I was always taught by, you know, people who taught me coaching, my college coach especially, anytime you go over a play or <coughs> give the history of the play. Okay, what the horn is, how many of you guys have run the wing tee in your life? Okay. I did when I was a high school coach. I was a wing tee guy. Okay, this is the wing tee buck sweep. Is what this horn play is. This is the wing tee buck sweep. We're going to block down at the point. We're going to seal things, and we're going to bring two pullers. Okay, we're going to either have a guard or a tackle pull for force or for the alley, and then our center is going to be the second puller, and he's going to turn up in daylight. And we're going to teach our running back to get in the hip of that second puller and then one cut and go. Just like you guys would teach the buck sweep. So it's 2005 when we got the pistol set. And I don't know, just one night woke up going, how can we tie the frickin' wing tee buck sweep into this? It's one back, but being in the pistol, can't we pull the center? And then the key was, was the back's action. Because you know, you have the full back as the dive and the running back is the carry. Well, with one back, we thought the whole key was with the back set, is what we call the horn reset step, where he's gonna slide and dive and come down heel first, and that's what's gonna freeze your backers. That's gonna give you the action of the full back on the dive of the buck sweep, and then after that back came down heel, then he's gonna seat the ball, and then he becomes just like a wing tee halfback. He's flat, second pull and cut. So that's the history of the play, guys. This is really the wing tee buck sweep. That's what this play is. Okay, and it's a power play. You're going to borrow blockers, guys. Those are your two pullers. It's your lead guard or tackle and your center. Freezes the linebacker, hides the running back, creates blocking angles. It's a great tight end strong side play. I really enjoy it out of two tight end sets because you can choice it to the numbers. Let's go over the rules. Tight end, his blocking rules. I don't use much verbiage in my rules. Real simple. Tight end's rule is to block the end man on the line of scrimmage with his hand down. If you just tell your tight end that, you're, you're fine. Block the end man on the line of scrimmage with his hand down. So you look at the third drawing there, he's got what we call a bearer of vice. Real simple if you tell your tight end, in man the line of scrimmage with his hand down. Strong tackles rule, it's wing T verbiage. You know, we all taught the buck sweep with Gap Reed down. His very first thing is down, meaning if there's anybody in the B gap, he's walking down on it. Whether there's a three technique in the B gap or whether there's a linebacker blitzing that B gap or coming up tough in that gap. You cannot allow penetration. This is your team. 
Andy Fuller. Rules. It's down or raw, meaning if there's an A-gap defender, he is blocking down. Once again, stopping all penetration. Okay, so he's blocking down. If there's no A-gap defender, all right, Okay, but let me back up. I jumped on you a little bit. If there's a head up defender, this is a very important rule. If there's a head three or a B defender, pull the tackle, let the guard step, okay, for play side. Knowing that if the guy slants in, he can get enough of them to cover him up and the back can still come downhill. So, very important point, I, at least to me, okay? Save you a lot of grief if you, when you get a head-up defender, pull the tackle base to guard. And once again, if you have a B... They're going to eyeball that hip. The backside guard is going to step at the backside hip. All right? If that nose slants to the play side guard, then it becomes an A-gap defender. He takes it, and the backside guard climbs to the backer. If that nose slants away, okay, then he becomes a backside def defender. The guard will climb to the linebacker, and the backside guard will take the nose. Backside guard in the wing T buck sweep. He's your second puller. He's going to gain depth. So if he snaps the pencil, he's going to gain depth with the second step. He's not going to follow the first puller so we don't get stacked. Okay, and then he's going to turn up in what we call first daylight. We tell him that he's going to get his eyes on the play side backer, knowing that the guard or tackle is pulling for force. in there with pullers okay and that's in the action with that horn reset step you're going to get some back to run through so he's going to keep an eye for run through and then he turns up first daylight and that's who the back is going to go with okay backside guys i could spend there 10 minutes telling you rules I, if you can cut our back our backside rules are rrc reach run and cut okay reach run and cut Basically, your backside guard and your backside tackle are responsible for the A and B gap cylinders. If you can cut, cut. If not, you got to stay up. We just, our playbook's really, really big. It says RRC, backside rules. Okay, reach, run, and cut. And if you look at outside zone, our rules are RRC. Okay, don't use a lot of verbiage. So, really going to move past these as we've talked about the pinch. Quick tackle. RRC in the B gap. This is the whole key to the play is the running back horn reset step. You know, the horn blocking scheme I'm sure has been around forever, but everybody always used stretch footwork. Yeah, I, I remember studying the New York Giants back in the 80s and early 90s with it, and boy, they, they just got outran, they got outran. But the thought was this, well, let's make it like the buck sweep. We need somebody to freeze the backers. That running back's going to take a slide and dive. That's his horn reset step. Now he's coming downhill right at the cheek of the center. He's going to seat the ball, press as long as he can, and then get in the hip of the second puller. Then just like you all taught the buck sweep, he stays flat. When that second puller turns, you put that foot in the ground. You should hear that foot go in the ground, and it's a one-cut run. It's a one-cut run. Okay, it is, that's just like everybody taught the wing tee bug sweep. Okay, that is it right there. Coach, you got up there to aim the outside hip of the guard. That's yeah, we should change that, we're more at the center. center. Okay. Yeah. Quarter, and this is why we really changed that with the quarterback. We used to say five and seven, we're, we're saying more 430 and 630. We're trying not to get them around as much. We felt we were pushing the back out too much. We wanted to get him more downhill, so. I need to change my PowerPoint.
Okay, but he's going to open opposite the call. And this also helps freeze it. He's going to catch it opposite the call, hand, and then boot opposite. So like with any wing T offense, you're going to get as much reverse pivot as you can. Okay, and always check the DN. DNs are going to chase, then you got to run bootleg on it. Oh, you show me that footwork again the quarterback I was looking at? Yeah, he's going to he's going to catch the ball here. Well, he's a pistol. He's going to catch it. Come right back there. That would be 430 hand and boot away. Okay? Now, here's probably the most important thing. Okay? So, you guys woke up at 8 o'clock this morning. I'm going to give you a good secret. Okay? I'm going to give you a great secret of teaching this. Here's what you teach your running back. Okay, I'm running more to the right. He's going to put a window there. Okay, he's going to put a window. And as he slides and dives, if he doesn't see the football, continue on your normal, normal track. If you see a football in your window, pause. You say, why? Because if that quarterback had to catch the ball there, it's going to take him a minute to reverse pivot. You, you'll screw up your timing. This is a very important point. So you teach that back, you look at your window. You come over, and if I don't see the football, it's good. That means the ball was snapped opposite the hole. And you want to teach your center to snap the ball opposite the way he's going. It leads to, leads to because if I snap it here, the quarterback goes right into his reverse pivot. It's easy. Okay? If I snap it here, holy shit. All right, you got to give that quarterback time to get around. Important point. So we always taught the uh, running back to learn the window. So we'll look at the little cut up here. We'll start off. This is one of my favorite formations. Okay, to run the horn play is, a, is slot trips. This is your throwing side right here, guys. This is your running side, because you know a lot of people feel if they leave a linebacker and a corner back here, they're safe. They're going, you can't run the ball. I got a 2D lineman, a linebacker, a corner, you got three offensive linemen. I got you outnumbered. This is where the horn comes in, where you borrow blockers up. Where this play improved, this is the original horn, 2005, right here, very first year of the pistol. Where it improved is when I went to Arkansas, Coach Petrino said, why don't we add a bubble to this formation? And you're going to see on film how effective that was. So our quarterback would come up, and if, he's, if there were too many numbers here, we would throw a bubble. If they were lined up to take away the bubble, we'd hand the horn off. Pretty simple stuff, really, if you think about it. But I want to give you a look at the of the horn here. So they're thinking they're pretty good. Once again, they're defending the pass here. But there's your two pullers right there. You see the center got his depth. There's your lead guard. There's your horn reset step. We'll look at this from the end zone. Now the back follows that second puller right there. We'll get a good end zone view of this. Alright, so come down right here. There's a B-gap defender. We're going to block down. We're going to get a seal, tight end, in man on the line of scrimmage. But we talk about what the... You see what the action... See the back steps. See the horn reset step. How he's coming downhill. He's not immediately leaving. Now he gets downhill, he's frozen the back, backers. Now he stays with the center right there. That's a real good look. Okay, and this is primitive here because this is the first year of the play. So we get a good look. Now let's tie the bubble screen on. Okay, so we're going to see exact same formation. Now we got the bubble screen. Well, quarterback comes up, sees one, two, three, four, and this safety's keyed over here. This safety's keyed over here. I'm going to run the horn. Okay, I'm going to run the horn. So quarterback comes up right now and he says, I got to run over here. They've got everybody keyed in over here. So we got the bubble on. So there's your bubble right there, but look at all this key to the pass. He's going to hand the horn off. There's your two pullers right there. How many all from Kansas City? 
All right, y'all Chiefs fans? Okay, yeah, there's your guy, Niall Davis, okay? He's fun to run horn with, because if you blocked everybody, he was gonna win the foot race. So we'll look at it from the end zone again. There's your 30 front right there. Now this was a team I said the nose was vertical. We didn't feel we could pinch it. So we're gonna block down and we're gonna wrap the guard. There's the guard wrapping for it there. Once again, look what the action does here. We have frozen the heck out. If I'm in your way, let me know. Okay, we have frozen that backer right there. If you look right there, it looks like this play, first thing, perfect snap. It's opposite the call there. So the running back doesn't see a football in his window. He starts downhill. Okay. There's your tackle pulling for force. Here comes your center pulling right there. Running back seats the ball and stays right with his second pull. Now watch him. This is how you run the buck sweep. He flattens and he brings the block right to the blocker there. Okay. That, that's a textbook run. Okay, center's got his depth, he turns up square and he attacks, but the running back is right in relationship, brings the block to the blocker right there. Once again, okay, we look at the save formation. Okay, save formation again, you got the bubble on it. Okay, you got numbers over here, they only got two defenders, run the horn. Now, center's got to get around this. Unfortunately, we stack ourselves. The guard takes the force. Center needs to get around it right there. But same look, you got a B-gap defender. The tackle is down. The guard is pulling for force. So again, you look at the horn reset steps. He's right in relationship. We needed the center around there for a touchdown. And once again, the backside. Real simple, this reach, run, and cut. Mechanics, see where the snap is again, guys. It's opposite the call. It makes it so smooth for this quarterback to get around. Okay, now they've got too many people over here. they got a corner coming, linebacker, or safety over the top. It's just math, guys. This is real simple teaching your quarterback. All right, you got corner safety, corner safety, throw the bubble. This is easy stuff for you offensively. It's an easy way to line up, move the football down the field. You teach a quarterback, you got corner safety. Corner safety, throw the bubble screen. Real simple. Nobody else needs to know. The line has no clue what's going on there. And you throw the bubble out. So again, quarterback saw corner safety linebacker. Okay, corner safety linebacker, there's short numbers over here. Okay. Takes it and he just throws the ball out. I, I just thought this was a great addition. It made the offense real simple. Okay. What I want to really stress, guys, if you get good at this play, and okay, we got really, really good at this play, the teams, we got this formation, they said we got to take away the horn. Okay, we're going to commit a corner, a safety, there's a backer, and we're going to move this backer over. Well, guys, they're leaving people uncovered out here. Okay, this is not a hard game. This is not a hard game, okay? We, we, had the, we really thought we had a hell of a deal going. Okay, we had an All-American running back, and we had an All-American receiver. So if you overload this, we're going to throw the ball to an All-American receiver, and you're going to leave them uncovered. That's our advantage. Okay, that was, that, this makes football real simple. Okay, I, that's what I liked about it. It's just counting numbers. You come up and say, holy cow. But the whole key is, you got to get good at running. You get good at running the play, you'll get people lined up corner, <laughs> linebacker, linebacker, safety. You, you've won the battle. You're forcing defenses to do stuff they shouldn't be doing. That's the beauty of this for Once again, nobody knows the difference. You throw it out there and let your athlete work in space. All right, next formation I want to go to is two tight ends. 
you're going to use the exact same principles training your quarterback. So you've already trained your quarterback to run here or throw the bubble screen. Now you get a two tight end set, you use the same mentality. If there's corner safety over here, choice the run back here. Now you're going to run the run. Instead of run the bubble, you're going to run the run. Okay, so you're going to run horn because you got two strong side surfaces. Okay, right here. Second thing you got to teach this, this receiver here. His rules are if it's too high. So anytime you got tight end slot and he's got too high receiver, he bypasses and blocks the safety. If it rolls down to one high, he blocks the safety. So it's also an easy way to say he always blocks the safety. Okay, that's pretty simple too. Okay, you shorten your verbiage. Okay, so we're going to let the pullers handle anything there. So the quarterback comes up right there, and what he saw there, he saw as a corner, and the backers are actually bossed over this way. So this backer's strong, and this backer is past the center right there. He's going to choice it back over here. Okay, real simple play. So they've got numbers over here, we choice it back over here. So see what the quarterback saw right there. Okay, he saw a five-man server, he's gonna choice it back over here. So you always start with the mentality, we're gonna run it back to what I call the dead side of the boundary. Okay, so if you got the slot formation, you're going to run the bubble screen. Two tight ends, you're going to run to run. It's the same training for the quarterback. It makes the quarterback's life really simple. Okay? So quarterback sees that right there, he kills this side, and he runs it right over here. Once again, you got a B-gap defender. So you're down, there's your two lead pullers right there. Okay, real good mechanics. By the running back, he's nice and patient. You come up again, exact same set. Okay, exact same set. Quarterback sees that this safety is keyed in coverage over here. So basically he's got a four man side. One, two, three, four, he's gonna run it here. If he felt that this safety, okay, was in the run game, he choice it over here. This really good, it's a great formation to run this play out. Of. But see, that safety's coming back to the center. He knew that through study. So he know I got a four-man side. This is a heck of a place to run it. Now center needs to cut this guy, get him down, we score a touchdown. But let's look at the rules again. Let's go over the rules. There's no B-gap defender. The tackle pulls for force. There's your lead puller right there. So again, there's the mechanic center, puts it right where it's supposed to be, backs downhill, and he's right with relationship with the second puller. Guys, that's just the buck sweep. That's all it is. So wing T buck sweep. Then backside, it's just reach, run, and cut. Real simple stuff on the backside. But once again, safety's cheating over here. You got numbers here. You got a seven technique and a shade. Those are good angles. Those are real good angles. Okay, two tight end set right here. Got one coverage all here. All you got on this back side, okay, is a two backers. You got to take advantage of that. All you got there is two backers. Come to the end zone look here. Okay, here's what the quarterback sees right there. Three backers, but the safety's over there. It's a four-man side, run it there. Now, once again, tight end does what? He reaches the end man in the line of scrimmage. So this thing's gonna hit inside. It's gonna hit inside right there. So the pullers are turned up right in there. There's your running lane right there. Okay, there's your running lane right there. Tries to reach, we stretch it, okay? First puller there, 
Second puller right there. Running back does a very nice job of setting the block up right there. Center needs to make the block. Okay, might score a touchdown, but real good job by the running back. But there, there's a look with a nine, but once again, you're counting bodies in these two formations. You tried it a couple times, the timing's bad. The timing's bad with the running back. It doesn't get in the running back's window well enough. Okay. Yeah, I flirted with that in 2006, one spring, because I didn't think my center was good enough. And then I said, you know what, make that center good enough. You know, don't, don't destroy the integrity of the play. The backside one or play side one? No, it'll cut his ass. Yeah, that's the advantage we got. That backside one, we're chopping him immediately. So when that center pulls and he sees that daylight, he's getting cut. So again, you got safety right there, so you bring the play back to the field right here. Again, you set the edge. So go over our blocking scheme again. Okay, there's your B-gap defender. We're down in man the line of scrimmage. This is what you were just asking about right there. That, that's, you know, we tell our guys immediately with the backside shade, hack them down. Okay, get their attention. I, that, I really, really want to point out how, with the backside blocks, but if you look at the, the action, we get a little free. We could, we could have been downhill a little bit better here. Could have been downhill a little better to freeze it. But those backside blocks right there are crucial. And once again, you set the edge, you pull for force, and bring your second puller. Good, good running though, staying with his pullers right there. Okay, they're loaded up over here now. The boundary's loaded. I count five bodies over there. So we need to run to the field. Seaver blocks the safety on him. But once again, lead puller's got the alley. Here's one where we're going to get the tackle to pull. So we got an A-gap defender. So, so two tights always in run. No bubble, sir. Run to run. Run to run. Yes. So what it gets you, you know, when you're going with slot and you're throwing run, bubble, run, bubble, and you're throwing bubble all day, you know, that sooner or later you go, God damn, I want to run the football downhill. So you get in this formation. And there's nothing wrong with a bubble, but there's a time you want to smack somebody in the mouth and get physical and play football. But once again, A-gap defender, so you pull the play side tackle. Wayside tackle's got the pull, he's got the alley right there. Back, that's a real good relationship with the back. Real good relationship with the back right there. Get you some different looks here. Down right there. Quarterback choiced it back here, felt the four-man surface was there. Red blitz. Actually, a good job here with blitz. The center's pulling, he's recognizing the blitz right here. Okay, and he takes the run through. So he pulls out of it right there instead of pulling. He recognizes the cross blitz. Now he needs to block the guy, but that's the correct assignment right there. Can't allow any penetration, can't allow any run-throughs. Tackle does the same thing, he pulls for force, doesn't see it. We always tell our guys, never pass color, never pass color. So he just stays on the color right there. What made that center not He read the blitz, he read the cross blitz there. So he pulled out of it right there. And this is the exact same run, guys. We're just going to motion to the two tight formation. I like this. It's a way to run away from your motion. Okay, so if you got something in your packages where you motion, 
a lot, you're running to the motion, this gives you a chance to run away from the motion right there. Still following the same rules. Once again, you got, okay, there's your head up technique right there. So there's what we just talked about. When they're head up, the tackle's gonna pull, we're gonna treat that as an A-gap defender. Okay, so you get somebody like maybe slants to your motion. Okay, but see the guard steps, and then he comes back right there. He's able to seal it enough, okay, that the back's able to press and stay in the window right there. Really a nice job of running. Back pressed it and trusted, trusted everything right there. There's your tackle pulling for force. Okay, go to two by two formations. This run, in my opinion, has brought this formation back. It's a doubles formation. Once again, people could put, you know, the old eight man box theory, where they play one high, leave an overhang to the strong side, feel they could take away your run game. The horn run right here, you know, gives you a chance to have numbers on this side right here. And this is really a good example of the center seeing run through. So you're down on the B-gap defender right there. There's the center taken right there. So his eyes are on that backer as he pulls. He, he feels that backer's coming downhill. He's going to take him right there. And the back is going to stay with the center. So we put this on the training tape to really teach backs to stay with your center right there. Doing a great job right there. Once again, the action. Okay, he freezes it. Like I said, this has been one of the most productive plays out of the pistol. Okay, it's been this play. And I've been able to show you this play being run at three different schools and three different conferences with success. Okay? Very, very productive play. This is more for just, we'll go to end zone. This is more for training your center. This is why he's got to get depth. Yeah, right there he gets a hard force on that guard. That's why he's got to have the depth to get around it. And once again, there's your running back, one cut. So he horn, reset step, he's downhill, he's with the center, he's flat. There's your one cut right there. That's good running. That's downhill. That's exactly how we all taught the wing T buck sweep. You're flat, you're flat, you're one cut, and then you're vertical. Really stress that in drills. <coughs> Once again, okay, backs. What's why you got to fill that D in if he's a little faster? You see, the back didn't press it as much, and we made that point early. And if you feel that inch chasing you, you got to hurry up your step. Now we got to come back and have a naked or something and help help ourselves out. Yes, sir. The rule for the tight end would be go down on the five tech because the the back would stand up. You're correct. You wedge the, the nose tackle. We would pinch that nose there. Yeah, pinch the nose yes. tackle. The front side tackle would then kick out the outside linebacker. Well, what he do? We want to get him to pull for pull with depth. So as the tight end comes down, he's going to pull with depth and. If it's a man coverage team, really like this call against man, because you get a lot of time to get that outside backer to put his hands down, and then we're able to log that guy in. Okay? And if he loosens, we tell that tackle to pull one man pass. So as he pulls and that guy loosens and runs, we're just going to take him to the sideline and turn it up inside. So we did really teach a one man pass. If that guy steps down, we're going to log and, and seal him right into there. We're going to put him right. And I have some looks on the 3 4. Somehow they didn't get transferred. Okay, this, this tape was a lot longer than this. I apologize for that.
Thank you. Get right here. We'll hold on this thing. We'll fall. So action right here. Tight end's going to come down, walk. It's what we call it a slow block. If you run a normal action, <coughs> so run your block to play. We get him to pull. We get him to replace the tight end. Tight end's going to slow block. He's going to block through it for about a count. And then he's going to release on his over route. Okay. Backside. Okay. They're using more boot rules. They're going A gap, B gap. He's going to seal that edge. <coughs> We're going to come out running on this thing right here. Backs. This over route constantly open, guys. Because these backers, once they read the horn, see the pull, <coughs> you get that flow right there. You get a hell of a flow right there. And then simply, you know, route wise, you can scissor it. Okay? Something like that will something to pull people out of here. But you're going to get that over route right there. And it's, great, it's a great action. Really, really a great action. And if the guys, if it's an A-gap defender, you just change it up, he pulls. They bought their rules, but anytime you get those two pullers, okay, you get the two pullers right there, you're gonna get flow from these backers right here. This this over route right here. Great, great, great play. Okay? Really like it enough. Going the other way with it. Here's what I really like. Chance for a home run. <coughs> Come the opposite way with the play. Okay, so we're going to pull right to here okay so we're going to get a pull there slow block him replace him right there seal that and he comes across there you bring him deep right there okay and you just read that corner right there he sits down there you throw high he goes there you throw low it coming back to this dead side here this has been a great great play to get big big plays Teach the numbers route at 18 yards. Okay, he teaches 18 yards. You teach him his normal drag route, getting his depth back here at eight yards. If he sees somebody here, he can climb. If there's nobody there, he flattens. But this this thing's hit a bunch. But again, you get great action here. You get no underneath coverage. So that has been a super play action right there. But that's just off the horn play action. Any other questions on the horn play? Coach, what did your left side tie in do? I couldn't see. Uh, on that look right there, when it booted back to him, he sealed the edge. Okay. So the tight end of the side you're booting to stays in protection. He's going to get you on the edge. 